What I'd like to do in this video is explore Think Pair Share, a cooperative learning methodology that can be used by students at any grade level and in any content or subject area. It is one of the six starting points of thinking with Thinking School's transformative design. For students, Think Pair Share is an opportunity for them to share and access their prior knowledge what they are bringing to the classroom from their own personal experiences. It provides an opportunity for them to share peer-to-peer -peer with their fellow students. And finally, it provides different ways of, um, of students to share their different styles of thinking. So it's really respecting how they are as thinkers and what they're bringing to the classroom. So we, the students, it's prior knowledge, peer-to-peer -peer transfer, and thinking. For the teacher in the classroom, Think Pair Share is an invaluable method of building community. Students learning with each other and to cooperate with each other. It really supports higher level thinking skills. And it is an opportunity for the teacher to model different styles of thinking, different ways of going about problem solving. So for the teacher, it's about community, thinking skills, and modeling. So Think Pair Share is about two students sharing their ideas on a particular topic or subject area between each other. In this video, we will look at four steps that maximize the potential of Think Pair Share. And we will look at the four steps in an overview first, and then we will take each one individually and look at them individually more in depth. Okay, now I'd like to show you the four steps. Uh, to do that, I'm going to clean off the board here a little bit. We'll take care of that text right there, and then we'll do it right here. And we're also going to take off the sequence of four, because we're going to do a sequence of four here. And so we're going to take off the little flow map. The first step that I'm going to do is I'm going to gather the students together in some type of fishbowl setting. In this case, I'm going to do a circle here. So each of these dots represents some students, or one student for each dot. Uh, it could be much larger, but for the sake of this, we'll have whatever number I put on there. So in this first step, the students are gathered in a circle, and the teacher might be in the middle, or it could be to the side. And they will lead them on a discussion of what they know about a particular topic they're studying. So we'll use plants as the example. So ask the students, what do you know about plants, and picking one student at a time, finding out what they know about plants for a short amount of time. So that is step one. Now we'll do step two going from step one to step two. The students will stay in the same location, so I'm going to draw little dots again to represent the students in a circle. Same location, we haven't moved. And the teacher, who's still in the center, will invite or select a student to come into the center with them and face each other. So they might be sitting cross-legged and knee to knee and facing each other face to face. They will pair share with each other everything they know about plants. So the teacher might say they have roots, and the student might share they grow. Uh, the teacher might share we get food from plants. And they go back and forth for about a minute to two minutes with all the students observing. The third step, the students will continue to be in the same location. So I'll again draw dots to represent the circle the students are in. And this time... Instead of the teacher being with a the student, there will be two students. So we'll select two new students to come out to the center. And the teacher will probably remain on the outside of the circle. While the two students in the middle will then pair share everything they know about plants. This will go on for approximately one to maybe three minutes with the students sharing, pair sharing things they know about plants. And they could take some things from what the teacher and the student did as well as student to student. And then this will lead us in to the fourth step. On the fourth step, the students will still be in the same circle. So we'll get the dots in here. And the two students are sharing in the middle, and the teacher will go around and pair up two students at a time. They will be asked to face each other and share everything they know about plants. And when the teacher has come around, and had them all paired up. Now, if you had one extra student, you could ask them to pair up in a pair. Um, and if it was even, obviously, there would be no question about that then. While the students are pair sharing, 
The teacher can go around and assess and listen to what the students are sharing. If they hear a very interesting idea that might affect other students, they might even share it out to the whole group. They would do this just sharing it out without stopping everybody. After doing this for several minutes, the teacher will then bring everybody back together. That is, stay in the circle you're in, but everybody's facing each other, including the two students will be asked to go back out to the uh, circle itself. And then we really have made a full circle. And just like we started at the beginning asking the whole group, WG for whole group, what they know about plants, we're going to do the same exact thing, except this time they've had a chance to share a lot of information with each other. I thought it would be really helpful to do a brief recap using photos. So the first step is when everybody's gathered in some type of fishbowl or circle gathering where everybody can see each other. And we do a little bit of what do you already know about prior knowledge of the subject we're studying. In this case, we were using plants. This leads to the second step while staying in that exact same setting. The teacher and a student, so the teacher and a student, go to the center and they model the pair share, everything they know about plants, which then leads to bringing third step here, two students pair sharing. So the two students are doing what the teacher and the student were doing. You'll find the students are even watching with a much keener eye on what's going on because it's their peers out there, which then leads to the next step, the fourth step, where not only do you have those two in the middle pair sharing, you pair up everybody around them. So everybody is pair sharing everything they know about plants. And then finally, we just come back around where everybody gathers, and again, whole group setting, what do you know about plants? And of course, we're going to have a lot more information, a lot more knowledge because of the amount of information that was exchanged. I think it would be a good time to look at each step in a little greater detail. So the first step when we gather everybody, I had them in a circle in the first uh, uh, sharing of this, and they could be in a fishbowl like this where they could see each other. If you were in a room with a uh, regular desk, say these were tables with uh, about four students on each uh, table, and we'll just uh, make it about this big for the nature of this video. It could be a little bit more tables in the room. I would get in the center right here with a student and then have the two students so all students from all the different locations can see in the center and they're looking at each other in the discussion. The key on both of these, whether it's in a circle, fishbowl circle, or a uh, set with tables in a classroom, is that the what's happening is happening in the center. In this case, we would have the teacher maybe out there. Now what's important about this particular part of the discussion is getting from the students their prior knowledge. So we want to know their prior knowledge on whatever the topic is. It's also a great opportunity to have them come up with questions they have about the topic. And prior to getting the prior knowledge and questions, I would recommend doing some community community building exercise, so some community exercise. Uh, it could be, um, if it was lower grades, it could be something like Zoom, moving in uh, rhythm, it could be commonalities of older ages, and something to pull everybody together prior to discussing whatever the topic is. Okay, just a few more things before we close the video. We're going to start with just a brief discussion on the pair share with the student and the teacher. This provides an opportunity for the teacher to model problem-solving skills. We'll abbreviate that with problem-solving. And it does um, also allow an opportunity to model dispositions. And at the same moment, also to model listening skills. And with the two students, it's an opportunity for the students to do the same type of things as above, problem solving, dispositions, and listening, and the students are watching their peers, so a lot of peer-to-peer -peer transfer. And that concludes this video on Think, Pair, Share, and Cooperative Learning.